Are you tired of being declined and gatekept from raids despite having above average gear and adequate item level? Do you wish there is something you could do to spend less time being declined and more time actually raiding and playing the game? If you answered yes to both of these questions, then you clicked on the right video, as I'm going to show you and teach you how to be a good at raid leading. Creating your own raid and leading is a very tough thing for most players, as they feel like they're not good enough to lead and it brings too much stress and anxiety. In reality, it is very easy to do, as there is not much you actually need to do when it comes to leading. Let's start with the most important thing, which is creating the raid. Title of the lobby is very important as it can give players enough information about what the raid is about. If you are doing a specific pug strat, if you are only looking for specific and higher item level players, if players require a title to be equipped, high roster level or even a specific class for a juicy synergy, all of this you can write in the lobby name. The best thing about this is that you decide who gets accepted and you get to judge and inspect every applicant before making decision. Creating a raid is very easy for support players as DPS players will likely want to join a raid with at least one support. But there is a way to attract supports to join your group if you are a DPS player. Most support players look for a fast, clean and chill run and they can be very picky who they join. So your best bet is having one or two higher item level DPS players already in the raid. Now that you know how to create the perfect raid, it's time to learn what you actually need to do as a raid leader in each of the four legion raids. One thing you need to understand is that most of the people you get in your raid will know what to do with mechanics, so your only job will be the signing on a bug strat, reminding everyone of a certain specific mechanic when needed knowing how and when to use ethereal skills and using pings to alert everyone about something and have them react. Other players tend to ping as well so you won't have to do it as much but it helps a lot in reminding and alerting players. Now let's start applying this into practice. First create a raid for Valtan and the most important thing to write in the lobby title is which orb strat is the raid doing. You have option of double way, orbs plus way or double orbs. The most common strat is orbs plus way, which is also safest and fastest for most people. Before gate 1, everyone will take positions in circle and just send a message in chat reminding everyone that it's orbs plus way. On the second mechanic, ping on the bottom to tell everyone to move in the safe position while you stand slightly between the boss and two bottom orbs. Left click towards the boss or put your mouse cursor on the boss then wait for stagger bar to appear under the boss and use way. Wait for orbs to aggro on you, then run top left, eat one of the orb and then move clockwise until the orbs disappear and boss gets staggered. For gate 2, if I am a raid leader, I always tell in chat that I will throw the corrosive bomb and everyone else throws destruction. If your DPS is decently high, you can say in chat that you will skip second destruction, which means everyone can freely DPS after his second charge. But to do it properly, you need to make Valtan destroy 3 pillars with blue orbs and then eat all of the 6 orbs. This will fill up your sidereal gauge just in time to use Baltor. To do it right, at the start, ping the first pillar and as Valtan is preparing to charge, throw corrosive on him. Let him hit the pillar and use all of your destruction skills. When you break his first armor, ping second pillar and move everyone there as Valtan will then jump on someone and spin backwards to destroy the pillar. Straight after that he does another charge and you need to ping the third pillar to have everyone move there. If Valtan broke all three pillars, make sure you collect all of the six orbs and your sidereal gauge will fill up. Use Baltor after Valtan gets past 130 bars. Other than that there isn't anything else you need to do as a raid leader in Valtan and depending on the DPS, you will have Baltor at 15 bars, and if not, use Tyran in Ghost Phase. With Vikas, same as with Valtan, you need to write in the lobby name if the raid is doing the Vey Frog Strat. If you don't know what it is and how to do it, it's better to do it normally. For Gate 1, you only need to ask who in Party 2 can do Sedevial and then pass the lead to that person if they get the purple boss. Best time to use Ninevi is straight after one of the mechanics, but you need to time it right so it doesn't take reduced damage. Before gate 2, everyone will already pick their positions for both mechanics, so you only need to make sure that everyone actually has a spot. Best time for Sidereal is when Vikas is doing the waffle patterns. 
If her stagger bar is low, use Wei to stagger her and interrupt the pattern, otherwise just use Nineveh. Before gate 3, you will want to type the order of the golden orbs, most common is 12, 3, 9. Then type swamp at 9, which indicates the swamp mechanic and where to position. Then type party 1 left, party 2 right, which is for tentacles. And lastly, type time stop medusa, if it comes to it depending on the DPS. Best sidereal usage is Nineveh after the typing mechanic and Wei at the end to help deplete the final stagger bar. For Kakul Seidon, there isn't anything important to write in the lobby name unless you prefer to do specific Mario, then just write which Marios are free. Before gate 1, take positions for the pinging hearts mechanic and for Sidereal, use Nineveh whenever it is up as the boss stands still quite often in gate 1 or if you have a lot of DPS, save it up for the second stagger mechanic and use Wei to pass the stagger and deal damage. In gate 2, your only job will be the maze mechanic, where all you will need to do is write positions in the chat and ping for your teammates. The easiest way is like this. Use the whole map as a clock, and each position represents a number on the clock. For example, if red mob is around 3 o'clock, then you type in chat R3, and you repeat that for all of the 3 colors. Use pings if someone is close to it but can't find it and use danger pings if someone is careless and isn't paying attention to the rolling clowns. After that you can either use Inanna on the pizza mechanic or blast the boss with Nineveh whenever you have a chance. Gate 3 also doesn't require much when it comes to raid leading. Make sure everyone knows their Mario. On showtime mechanic use Inanna in the center and just damage the boss into the bingo phase. For that you will want to open bingo tool on your phone or a second monitor. If you cannot use it then ask someone else to open it and ping where to place the bombs. Depending on the DPS, use Nineveh to finish the boss when he's low HP or play it safe and keep Inanna if you mess up the bingo. For Brolshaza, most people who can do all 6 gates usually do 1 to 4 first then 5 to 6 with a different group as it's easier and faster to fill up 1 to 4 group than it is 1 to 6. It also helps if you can do Procol, otherwise put it in the title that you are looking for a Procol killer. In gate 1, make sure you write in chat party 1 x3 and party 2 x3 plus 1 to indicate positions for the save zones. For sidereal usage, straight after first phase, run under the boss and aim towards it in a straight line and use Tyran to hit both of the bosses and break their armor. At 45 bars for counter mechanic, use Azina as soon as mobs spawn or you can wait a little bit longer until the boss spawns to deal some extra damage to the boss. Gate 2, decide 3 players that will take 3 orange orbs or lead with an example and you be one of the 3. Give raid lead to Procol killer and keep the same x3 positions for the last mechanic. If you are a Procol killer then you already know how and when to use sidereal skills. Gate 3 make sure everyone has selected their position for geometry mechanic and force them to stand in their spot just to confirm it. If you are playing a class that's good for destroying stars, you should volunteer to do it. Write in chat same x3 and x3 plus 1 for positional mechanics and you can either use Wei for a stagger mechanic, blast it with Nineveh whenever it's up or use Inanna during the geometry mechanic. Before gate 4, change party names to the following. Party 1, GGWW, which indicates green, green, white, white. And Party 2, BBRR, which indicates blue, blue, red, red. This will help players in each party to know where is their position for each mechanic. In your party chat, decide who is destroying, who is catching and who is staggering out of 4 for the yellow mechanic. For stagger mechanic, if you have classes with a lot of stagger, use Inanna first, otherwise use Wei. Before gate 5, change party names to white for party 1 and black for party 2, just in case someone forgets their color. Make sure 2 players have been decided to do counters on bottom and top side and which player from party 2 will stay outside. During the fight, at 144 bars, ping danger multiple times, indicating that everyone should stop attacking and write in chat last, alerting everyone to fix their shapes as it is the last pattern. The positions are also x3 for the first mech and x3 plus center for the second mech, so make sure this is also mentioned before the raid. 
At 110 bars, when staggering the orbs, use emote or a ping to signal that you finished the snagger on your side and other party can start their stagger. At 54 bars, do the same as on 144 bars to alert people and remind everyone it's x3 plus 1 and in the center of a tile. Sidereals is Rishandi to reset cooldowns or Azena for damage whenever it is up. Before gate 6, only mention that 7 and 8 blue meteors are going on 1 o'clock and that it is x3 and x3 plus 1 positions for Shandi mechanic. After first yellow meteor, try to keep track when they will respawn and before 140 bars, ping danger to signal everyone to stop attacking and wait for top tiles to respawn. Repeat the same thing at 117 bars and wait until 30 seconds before bottom tiles respawn to push the boss into the cutscene. Depending on the blue meteor management, ping and write in chat which tile to nuke if needed. For last yellow meteor you won't need to slow down with the DPS in most cases, so full damage until the final mechanic. For sidereals, Azena after first shape pattern, Shandi during Shandi mechanic, Straight after Shandi mechanic you can either go Azena or another Shandi to refresh cooldowns and Inanna during second shapes mechanic. And there you have it, a guide showing you everything that a raid leader needs or should be doing when leading a raid in all 4 legion raids. It's not as hard as it sounds, most people already know everything how to do it and when to do it. Most of them will also ping and even write or ask in chat for specific mechanics what to do and how to position for them. You only decide what to do and how to do it and know how and when to use sidereals. Don't be afraid to start your own raids if you have a hard time getting accepted. Remember that people nowadays look for fast clears so they will always accept higher item level players over you. And there is a lot of competition as a DPS class so instead of wasting hours waiting to get accepted into a group that ends up being a jail for a few hours. Just start your own and then you get to accept and decline whoever you want. If you have any questions or concerns about the video, let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching, stay safe and if you are interested to watch more, click on the videos on your screen.